Hey there, I'm Scott, and this is Tangents. Um, well, today I'm going to talk about uh, something in the news, and it's something that spans... Um, it's not, unfortunately, something that will just be isolated to this moment. It's kind of an ongoing, um, well over my lifetime battle, and unfortunately will last a lot longer. Um, it also touches on some stuff that I talk about a lot, um, especially like politics and uh, the Sanders campaign, all of this kind of stuff. Um, but basically, I want to talk a little bit about Roe. And first off, I want to preface all of this by saying I am, you know, there are people who say like, oh, I don't like abortion, but I support a woman's right to choose. You know, fuck that. I am enthusiastically, wholeheartedly pro-abortion. It is medical care. It's something that, uh, you know, it's not just that it's a woman's choice or a person with a uterus's choice, I guess I should say. It's that it's just, you know, like a basic thing. Like having that level of autonomy over your body is something that uh, should just be a given, honestly. And especially, you know, it, it's infuriating to see people, especially people who are strongly, strongly opposed to any kind of support, either for um, pregnant people, for people with kids, for kids themselves. Um, any kind of government support for that can't have it. But uh, people have to carry babies to term. Um, it's fucked up. Also, a lot of these people, and I don't want to get too much into this, but a lot of these people are very much opposed to comprehensive, medically accurate sex ed. Uh, they end up doing things like trying to teach abstinence, which is one of these infuriating things to me that, uh, you know, I, I'm not a big uh, laboratory of the states kind of guy, but it's one of... Like, the idea is, if you really accept it, or at least their argument for it, the Federalist argument for the laboratory of the states, is, you know, we'll do these experiments, and then we'll see what works, and we'll see what doesn't, and then we'll replicate the stuff that works, and we'll kind of stop doing the stuff that doesn't. Um, except that's not what they do. Because you end up having states that uh, cut taxes massively and cut services. They turn to shit. And you see that, and it's like, oh, well, that's... You should go a lot. That was a probably didn't need to run the experiment, but now you've run it, you've got the data. Don't do that. But instead, it's just a fucking religion. Like, people are obsessed with this idea that government needs to be torn down, uh, that you need to get rid of taxes. And bizarrely, also, the people who want the government out of your life are also the people who want the government in people's uteruses, which, you know, yeah, fucking bizarre. Um, Obviously, there's a huge thread of religion here. Um, although, I don't know, I I used to be... I don't want to say that I'm intolerant of religion in general, but I used to be much more understanding. But prior to, say, 2016 or so, I, I would at least accept the idea that, okay, these people believe in, like, ridiculous fairy tales. Um, just absolute utter nonsense that's silly but you know they they're at least under their own moral and ethical framework decent and i no longer i no longer think that i um uh, you know the whole the fact that uh, these air quotes conservatives and we really desperately need a better word than conservative but these people who call themselves conservatives um brand themselves conservatives these people are terrible people. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, and Scott, how, how can you be so judgmental of so many people? It's like, okay, best case scenario, they're like not really speaking up. I do know people who are, and I, I, I do want to say, obviously, I speak in generalizations sometimes. There are people who I know who are religious, who seem good and decent, and who don't, you know, didn't vote for Trump and all of this kind of stuff. That's fine. I still think the net effect is negative, and the people who most supported Trump 
are the evangelicals and again people who call themselves conservatives and it's just yeah I, I mean anything that makes you do something that horrible makes you support someone who like his whole fucking thing is like uh, make the liberals cry it's just grievance politics about people who have and i'm not saying like everybody has reasons to be aggrieved you know no matter who you are there are things that could be better that's absolutely true no matter who you are you've probably been fucked over you've probably run into bureaucracy or things that were just annoying or someone was a dick to you pretty much everyone has such things now obviously there's a spectrum you know if you're a kid who dies before five because of massive poverty or you lost your vision because you didn't have any vitamin a um, you probably have more to be aggrieved about than some asshole who's in a trunk who just wants to make the the liberals cry you know the guy my neighbor who has the the truck that um, says you know i'm voting for trump because you know fuck you and not, not not because he likes anything about trump not because trump stands for something or represents something for him just fuck you that's his whole fucking thing uh he has a piss on obama sign and don't get me wrong also i used to love obama and i mean there's something like this dude when you listen to him speak and if you're someone like me that i, I just lap that shit up you know that professorial tone that sort of like um the cadence something about you know he's obviously very well informed very knowledgeable you know he is a professor or was a professor of constitutional law so he knows some things about some things and he has this just extremely comforting way about him and it just you know i'd hear that and i was like whoa that's awesome and don't get me wrong i still like him in some ways but also you know i look at this and this is a dude who did a crap ton of drone strikes you know killed a lot of people with that did all kinds of other horrible things uh, the thing that really i find most unforgivable is just making some calls during the the primary uh, for 2020 and uh, basically shutting down bernie's campaign and you know I, I mean just never gonna forgive him for that it's it's just done yeah you know, i'm i'm never gonna look at him in a positive light again and yeah there are a lot of other things where they're kind of like you see some badness peeking out from behind the curtains you see some just like yeah this is a pretty good guy and then it's like oh well he's on the beach with branson you know fucking around with billionaires i'm not saying obviously if you have access to that kind of stuff i get why you would do it but it's not a great look uh, you know he's doing things that just sort of start making you think like uh yeah and independent like uh, I, I don't care how good of a person you are um this is an unfortunate thing i was just, i was just talking with my uh, my business partner about this yesterday but if you get elevated to that level you know you think about uh you know, like the nancy pelosi thing where you've got hundreds of millions of dollars or you know never mind even becoming a billionaire but you know you're someone like the rest of his life he's going to have people you know kissing his ass he's totally insular um probably will want for nothing that's you know now maybe maybe somebody gets sick and it's beyond medical technology to fix them that is it, you know it sucks but compared to any human being on the planet you know that's like the best possible care is at his fingertips the best experiences the best ability to go pretty much anywhere now there are restrictions obviously like you can't just go out into a crowd You're gonna have a lot of people you know harassing you or saying hi to you or whatever but you know there's a trade-off but when you get into that position that kind of position i i really don't know that it's possible to maintain any kind of touch with everyday people's experiences um you know if you're if you're a billionaire um just imagine you know you have billions of dollars of assets if you want a house you could you know any house literally any house 
you could pay twice the market value of that thing and not even think about it. Like really, there's just like no house. The only house that you could possibly start, you know, having like a material impact on your wealth would be the one in, uh, I think it's Mumbai, the billion dollar sort of mansion overlooking terrible slums. Um, if you want that one, okay, maybe, maybe you have some problems. But a house that's like $50 million, you want to give them $100 million for it? Done. No big deal. Not a, not a problem. And much less any house that's like a normal house for normal people, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, or if it's in LA, like in the low millions, you can, like, without thinking about it, buy 10 of them. And, you know, it's just like, eh, who even, it's not even worth, it, it's such a small amount of money to you that... It's, you almost can't even blame people because it's like for a normal person trying to account for tenths of a penny, you know, or hundredths of a penny. Like you can do it in principle if you really try, kind of, but at a certain point, it's just such a small, insignificant fraction of your wealth that, you know, it, it's hard to imagine that that has any consequence at all. And there are people, there are plenty of people in this world where a hundred dollars, ten dollars is life changing. You know, a few thousand dollars, massively, massively impactful. For someone like Obama or Branson, I mentioned, um, Bezos especially, or Musk, you know, a hundred thousand dollars is like, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you don't even account for it because it's such a small, insignificant, inconsequential amount. And I mean, in principle, like, you know, I, I have trouble, I'm not sitting here worrying about the microbiota on this part of my hand. You know, it's, it's hard to focus on that kind of stuff because you, you only can really exist within, you know, unless you have a Jupiter brain or something like you're massively super intelligent, you can't really focus on all of this stuff going on that to you is effectively, you know, like you'd need a microscope to see it. And, and similarly, I mean, you know, big enough stuff, it's really hard as well, but it's a little easier to get your hand on that because it's a little bit less abstract and there's a little bit less of it in some sense, I guess. You know, there's only one planet, only a handful of, uh, or one or planet Earth, and then only a handful of other planets in the solar system. You know, it's pretty easy to think about things in those terms. But anyway, rolling back to Roe. Um, I, I don't even necessarily want to say anything about this. I mean, this is obviously a horrible situation. It's totally predictable. Like everybody has, anyone who's been paying any attention to this at all has seen this coming. And, you know, it's just something, I mean, they have all of these trigger laws in so many different states, including Arizona, thank you very much, where if Roe gets overturned, then abortion is effectively illegal in a lot of these states. I mean, it sounds like a crazy thing, but done, not a thing. Now, of course, illegal is an interesting, is an interesting thing because if you're poor, then you're fucked, right? You're, you're fucked because you're, you're probably going to have trouble getting contraception. You're probably going to have trouble getting the morning after pill, which for anyone listening to this probably goes without saying, but not an abortion pill. Not that it matters, but you know, just prevents, uh, prevents fertilization, not an abortion pill. Again, doesn't really matter. I don't know why I'm even getting into that, but you know, and then, you know, actual abortion pills, medical abortions, this kind of stuff, you're going to, you're not going to get those if they're illegal. You're not going to get prenatal care, um, or you'll get like minimal prenatal care, minimal prenatal vitamins. And, you know, if because of that, you have a kid who has any kind of issues, which, you know, given like this country, we have high infant and maternal mortality. And we also have, you know, a lot of people who are getting shitty prenatal care, getting shitty birth care. You know, like birth can go pretty smoothly or it can go really badly. And if it goes really badly and you're in a hospital and there are OB-GYNs there and they can uh, do an emergency C-section it still sucks, but it's not that big of a deal. If you're poor and uh, you know you just 
can't do that. It's a, it's a different fucking world. And so, you know, the same baby born breach in both cases, um, in one case may be fine, and the other case may have permanent brain damage because the doctor couldn't get there in time, couldn't get them out in time, and either dies or goes about their lives with, you know, severe disability, which of course you don't have really good support to, uh, to help them with. And now you have a kid who you certainly love and care for, probably, but, uh, you know, they're a massive burden on you. I mean, even if it's like a perfect, healthy kid and everything is good, it's expensive and it's a shit ton of work. And then, you know, and, and that's for somebody with a lot of resources. If you're somebody with no resources and probably like you have to work a couple jobs just to survive, like what the fuck do you do? I mean, we, we live in a country where childcare costs more than a typical job. Um, so if, in, unless you have a job where it pays a lot of money and even if you, even if you get a decent salary, like, uh, you know, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar a year salary, it sounds like a lot to people who are making like 20, but you're still kind of, you know, I mean, I'm not saying you're, you're scraping by, by any means. You're kind of, you can be relatively comfortable, but you know, big expense or big medical issue or anything like this, and it can be devastating. I mean, this is the the place we live. It's um, it's really fucked up. And so we have these, yeah, you know, we have these. Uh, I, I I hesitate to even call them justices. These people like um, Kavanaugh and Cohen, and they're just, you know, they're just grown in a lab, with the express purpose of. The, the one that we always focus on is overturning Roe, which is horrible, but they're also there essentially to legislate from the bench. This was one of the reasons that, uh, that Trump got elected in the first place was just so that uh, McConnell could install these people. Yeah, and, and we have this stupid fucking system where, yeah, I don't know, you get a lifetime appointment and you think about a lifetime appointment. I mean, uh, Breyer was, uh, nominated and took the bench in, uh, Breyer's relatively good, you know, air quotes, good, uh, not like Sotomayor, or, you know, but Breyer, what was it, 94, so he's been there almost 40 years, you know, not that much, like a little bit longer, and it's like my life, you know, um, it's within striking distance of my lifetime. On in one job, and the amount of disconnect that this person has, and I, again, it's like being a billionaire. I don't necessarily even blame him for it. You have a job where you have you essentially no consequences. Like in principle, I guess you could get impeached, but never. You know, I mean, in the history of the country, it's happened. I don't know, once or twice, and even then, there were some pretty extenuating circumstances. You know, you're, so you basically have a secure job for life, pays well, a shit ton of respect, and you have the ability to, I mean, you're essentially a priest in a robe sitting up on high and people have to beg you to, um, to do things like preserve somebody's right to, to choose, um, right to have bodily autonomy. Incidentally, and this is a small tangent and I'll get back in a second, but one thing that drives me fucking insane about all this anti-vax bullshit um, and actually, it's a, it's, a, it's a cluster of several things. One, they've started using pro-choice language, my body, my choice kind of stuff, both for masks and for vaccinations. And it, it just, like, you want to fucking rip people's heads off and, you know, like, just, what the fuck? And that, that's, that's one thing that they're doing. The other thing they're doing is, like, comparing comparing these vaccines to fucking experiments by Mengele. You know, I mean, like, Holocaust kind of shit. Uh, or, or, you know, like, putting the fucking Star of David on your on your clothes. Just, it, it, you wanna, I don't know. The fact that people, like, is it massive ignorance of history and uh, no perspective on these things? Or do they know and they're intentionally being completely fucking horrible? I don't know. I don't give a shit, to be honest, because 
it's the same. Th it, the, the end effect is the same. It's reprehensible. It's indefensible. It's terrible. And it's just like, like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? You know? I mean, just like, Jesus fuck. So anyway, rolling back, you know, serenity now. Serenity now. But yeah, you, know, you get back to to this abortion stuff, and it's just like one of the things that annoys me. So we have Democrats in the House, control of the House, control of the Senate, and the presidency. Now, granted, okay, we have Cinema and Mansion. Yeah, say what you will about them. I do not buy that. There's no leverage that you could use against them. I, I don't accept that. Um, you can make whatever argument you want. I'm not arguing this from ignorance. There are so many things that could be done that haven't even been tried. And so, you know, I mean, essentially, like, Biden was for the Hyde Amendment and anti-abortion not that fucking long ago. I don't think he gives a shit. I don't, I think he either likes the idea of having abortion be illegal or he's totally indifferent to it. Yeah, I, I don't, you're never going to convince me otherwise. And if he cared, like, you know, he cared about getting hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks to wealthy people, then that would be legislated already. It would already be something that was on his desk and signed. Roe would be codified into law. Uh, I mean, Obama actually campaigned on it. I, I you know, I read this uh, recently, but uh, actually said that he was going to sign legislation. And, uh, you know, 2008... Democrats took the House, the Senate, and the presidency. They had it for a couple years. They lost it, sure. But they had an opportunity to fucking do it. They didn't do it. Didn't do it. Uh, you know, and, and also, I mean, and this one annoys me. But they could easily eliminate the filibuster, protect voting rights, which if they don't do that, then you know, we're fucked in many different ways. Uh, they could expand the court. They could add term limits to the justices. They could make all, they, they, you, you could just sit here for five minutes and think of like dozens and dozens of things that they could do that they're not doing. And the fact that they're not doing it screams that they don't give a shit. It just fucking screams. And then you have these people who are sending out campaign emails for, uh, you know, 2022 saying like, oh, vote for us to protect. Ro Fuck you. You're in office right now. Do something. And then I'll vote for you. And it just, it, it, it's maddening. Fucking maddening. And it's, it's one of these things, like, I'm seriously, I, I know this is absurd, but, you know, I am just to the point where, like, I, I campaigned and voted for Hillary in 2016 after, after Bernie lost. I, and, and when I say I campaigned for her, I mean, um, he lost something around mid-August. I started uh, going out making calls for her, knocking on doors, and I live in fucking Phoenix. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Phoenix is kind of hot. Now, I went in the morning, to be fair, but in the summer, in the morning in Phoenix, it's fucking hot. In, and I was going out like every fucking week, August, September, October, all the way through and including election day. I was out knocking on fucking doors at least once a week. And even election day, even November in Phoenix, hot. And it just, it, it drives me insane to see so many people, first off, so many people blaming Bernie for, for this. See a bunch of people blaming Susan Sarandon like she has any power at all. Uh, it, it, it's just, it's just maddening. Yeah, you know, if, if you want to blame somebody, and I don't think blame, you know, fix the problem, not the blame, I really believe in. But if you do want to blame somebody, maybe think about the person who was running who ignored a few states and whose campaign was basically telling people like, oh, it's in the bag. It's like using the fucking secret to try to win an election. It's, it's in the bag. We've got this. Uh, whose campaign through this Pied Piper thing propped up Trump because they knew, that, not just that, they, they were certain that Trump was the most, like the easiest candidate to defeat. We'll just, we'll just get him nominated and then we can just knock him out like, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, blame those fucking people. Or better yet, don't blame anybody 
and think, okay, these are the mistakes that we made. Let's not fucking do them again in 2022 and 2024, and especially in 2024 because Trump very easily could get reelected. I mean, I, I talk to people now and they're like, oh, well, you know, Biden won by a landslide. No, it's like, I mean, kind of he won by a decent number of votes in terms of absolutes. You look at percentages, I mean, I guess because of our polarization, we never have, you know, I mean, it's it's been, I don't even think in my lifetime that we've had, you know, a 10 point swing between, you know, or something like truly massive. There are examples in history, mind you, but um, in my, certainly in recent memory, it's always, you know, kind of on the margin. No matter how, like Trump is fucking horrible. You have somebody as horrible as him fucking up the pandemic response and doing all these things that are terrible in the news, in your face. And that got people out. Yeah. But it also got out a shit ton of people supporting him. Like, you know, more people voted for him than voted for anyone else prior. You know, I mean, now granted, more people still voted for um, for Joe. But you look at that and you should think, oh, maybe that's a thing to worry about. You know, like maybe if you dial down the amount of people that come out to vote against Trump, and especially if you're doing it by doing things like letting Roe slip or not protecting voting rights, you know, just out organize, out organize voter suppression, out organize gerrymandering. Fuck you, you have the power to do something about this. And you're telling people, not even paid people, not paid people to work on your campaigns, fucking volunteers who bust their asses. And as someone, like I've not done, I know people who've cam canvassed and made more calls and done more texts and done any metric way, way, way more than I have. But even the small taste of it that I've had, it's a pain in the ass. Like even for somebody, I love Bernie, you know, going out, knocking on doors for him. I will say this, it was night and day. Like even the people who didn't want to vote for him, like him, even the people who were like, oh, the, 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 the most, the strongest condemnation I ever heard of him was like, oh, well, you know, I really like him, but can he win? And well, probably not with that attitude. But, you know, I mean, you'd hear stuff like this. But even like I know people who are Trump supporters who like and respect Bernie. You know, and I would talk to when I was knocking on doors for Hillary, you know, and, and I wish more people would have done this because I was not it, it, it scared the shit out of me. Like five looking at 538 and seeing, you know, it was between a coin toss and losing Russian roulette that Trump could win. Uh, that should scare the shit out of you. You know, people were like, oh, it's in the bag. Look at the fucking numbers. No, it's not in the bag and it should scare the shit out of you. But on top of that, knock on doors, you start talking to people. And I did go to places where people were not, you know, regular voters. But most of the people, they, they would cut these lists. If you ever canvas, they cut these lists. And the default thing that they do on the lists is they pick high propensity voters, you know, like Democrats who voted in the last three elections. And, you know, like, you see people like that and you're like, okay, this is somebody who's probably fairly safe. And you knock on the door and time and again, I would hear people say they didn't trust Hillary, they didn't like Hillary. I heard some people say they would never vote for her. And, you know, I'm not saying that any of that stuff is valid or true. Like, you know, I mean, I, I know somebody who voted for Trump who um, literally thinks Hillary had like 50 people, somehow exactly 50, had 50 people whacked. Like people just murdered, just, and, and he says this, like, it's not even a question, you know, like you say the sun is hot, you know, obviously everything has some uncertainty or attached, but it's like, yeah, it's pretty, pretty safe bet that the sun is hot. He was saying this, like it was an absolute certainty, like a known quantity, like there's no question about it. Um, you know, it's just like, makes you fucking lose your mind. But these Democrats were saying this kind of shit and you know, her campaign would never address it. And I'm not saying, like, again, it's not fair. Like, she's been attacked for decades. Yes, absolutely. She had her healthcare proposal as first lady, which seems to be pretty good. I've not, you know, gone into the details, but it seems like it was pretty decent, way ahead of its time. And um, I just realized I have to go. Uh, this is fucking annoying. I have uh, a meeting in three minutes, soon to be two. And I have meetings all day, so I don't think I can continue this. I have more stuff I want to say. 
obviously. But uh, yeah, it just, it's, it's maddening. It's fucking maddening. So thinking about leaving the country and renouncing my citizenship because I don't want to be in the position that I was last year where it's like, I'm not gonna, I, I'm absolutely like Trump is horrible. And I'm not the person that says like Joe Biden is as bad as Trump. Obviously Trump is much worse than Joe Biden. But they're both bad. And it was a legitimate moral quandary. It was hard to vote for Joe. You know, I did it. Not like massively hard, but I still, you know, like it hurt. And then I had to vote for fucking cinema. And that one, like I literally, you know, and, and to this day, I don't even know if I made the right call. Because it's like, okay, you got the, you got the house, you got the Senate, and now you're doing fuck all with it. Uh, and yes, I understand build back better, oh, you know, but if you actually look at these things, even the, the good stuff in infrastructure, it's basically like corporate handouts for the most part and orders of magnitude less than it would actually take to do anything to actually impact pretty much anything. So with that, thank you very much. Um, next week, things might be less crazy, so I might have a longer one and uh, we'll see, but ah, shit, 59 seconds. So with that, thank you. Say Jen.